Now, today we are going to deal with module 5, Material Science, CFET, which is nothing but Classical Free Electron Theory. Now, what is Classical Free Electron Theory? Free Electron Concept. All metal atom consists of valence electron. These valence electrons are responsible for electrical conduction in bulk state of metal. Mean free path denoted by lambda. It is the average distance travelled by the conduction electrons between two successive collisions with the lattice ions. So this classical free electron theory given by Lawrence and Drude, he has given it is nothing but a free electron theory where free electrons are nothing but the valence electrons which are lying in the valence orbit. These valence electrons are responsible for the electrical conductivity. Before we go with the CFET, classical free electron theory, we need to define some of the terms with which we are going to explain classical free electron theory. So mean free path, lambda, it is the average distance travelled by the conduction electron between two successive collisions within the lattice ions. Next is mean collision time denoted by tau. The average time taken between two consecutive collisions of an electron with the lattice point is called as a mean collision time. Next is a drift velocity. The net displacement of the position of the electrons per unit time in the presence of electric field is known as a drift velocity. So these three terms drift velocity, mean free path and mean collision time using three, these three definitions we are ex going to explain how exactly conductivity is taking place as per the classical free electron theory where it is a free electron concept. Now the drift velocity is the velocity acquired by an electron in the presence of electric field. Mean collision time is nothing but the time taken between two successive collisions. Now as the we know that resistance is because of the collisions with the lattice ions or with the electrons themselves. So in the presence of electric field electrons collide with another electron or with the lattice ions. This collision between two successive the time taken between two collisions is called as a mean collision time and the distance traveled between electrons between two successive collisions with the lattice ions is called as a mean free path. So distance, time and velocity. The drift velocity Vd is given by Ee by m into tau where small e is the charge on an electron, capital E is the electric field or electric intensity and tau is the mean collision time. Next we see what exactly is a CFET and how is it explained and it is given by Drude and Lawrence theory in 1900 and these are the assumptions which we are going to see. Free electrons, what are the assumptions? There are four assumptions which we are going to see with the CFET. Free moving valence electrons called free electrons in a metal are confined to its body and electric current in the metal is due to the applied field is a consequence of drift velocity in a direction opposite to that of the direction of the electric field. So CFET says that because of the free electrons the conductivity is taking place. The second assumption is the free electrons are treated equal to gas molecules and thus assume to obey classical kinetic theory of gases in the absence of electric field. That means half mvth square is equal to 3 by 2 kT. It is a kinetic theory of gas equation where Vth is the thermal velocity, K is the Boltzmann constant and T is in temperature in Kelvin and m is the mass of electron. That means the free electron is moving like a gas molecule. This is the kinetic theory of gas equation which has been taken as an assumption for the CFET. Next is electric potential due to ionic cores is taken to be uniform throughout the metal. Next is electrons attraction between the free electrons and the lattice ions and the repulsion between the electrons themselves are considered as insignificant. So these are the four assumptions that they have taken and explained the conductivity in metals which is because of the valence electrons. Now before going to that we will see some, of, some more definitions which is nothing but a relaxation time tau r. The time required for average velocity of the conduction electrons to exponential decay to 1 by e times its value just when the electric field is turned off is called as a relaxation time tau r. Current density j is a current density current i per unit area of cross section a of an imaginary plane held normal to the direction of current in a current carrying conductor that means j is nothing but i by a or j is equal to n e v d 
I is nothing but N E A V D. I by A gives J. Therefore, J is equal to N E V D. What is electric field? The potential draw of V per unit length of a conductor gives the electric field that exists across a homogeneous conductor of a uniform cross sectional area that is E is equal to V by L that means potential drop per unit length of a conductor gives the E. Next is a conductivity. Conductivity is denoted by sigma. It is a physical property that characterizes the conducting ability of the material. It is the inverse of resistivity that means conductivity and resistivity are inverse to each other. So sigma conductivity is equal to 1 by rho. So it can be taken as L by Ra because rho is equal to Ra by L. Next is electrical conductivity in metals which is denoted by sigma from Ohm's law J is equal to sigma E therefore sigma is equal to J by E substituting the values of J N E V D by E is equal to M V D by E tau. We get the expression for conductivity in a CFET E sigma is equal to N E square tau by M. Mobility mu. The mobility of electrons is defined as a magnitude of drift velocity acquired by the electrons in a unit field. Therefore, mu is equal to Vd by E or mu is equal to sigma by Ne. These are all the expressions which we are going to deal with. So, before going to do all those expressions, we, we need to know these basic things which, with which we are going to derive the expressions. Next is we see the failures of CFET. The Lorentz and Rood has given the assumptions and based on that assumptions they have explained the conductivity but what are the failures means they could not explain some of the things which are not which led to the failures of CFET that means experimental results are not in agreement with the theoretical results whatever the theory they have arrived those theoretical values or expressions should relate to the experiment should be equal should be equated and we can applicable then only that experiment is been treated or the theory is been considered correct based on the experimental values but the experimental values are not in sync with the theoretical values therefore it is a failures in what aspects the failures has been seen we go we are going to deal now now, what are the failures of CFET? The first failure where is specific heat cannot be explained properly. Now, we see. Theoretically, CV is equal to 3 by 2 R. As per the CFET, specific heat at constant volume CV is equal to 3 by 2 R. But experimental value per specific heat was found to be CV is equal to 10 to the power of minus 4. If you look at it here, experimental values are coming different and theoretical values are coming different. And which are the value... Theoretical value is very much different from the practical value and practical value there is a dependency of temperature which could not be explained in the theoretical value. So this is a great failure. Specific heat could not be explained by CFET. So this led to one of the failure. Next is temperature dependence of electrical conductivity. It was experimentally observed that for metals the electrical conductivity is inversely proportional to temperature. That means sigma experimentally it is said that 1 by T that is uh, conductivity is inversely proportional to temperature experimentally. But according to the main assumptions of the classical free electron theory 3 by 2 kT is equal to half mVTH square from which VTH is equal to 3 kT by M. From this equation we say that VTH is proportional to root t directly proportional to root t the mean collision time tau is inversely proportional to thermal velocity tau is inversely proportional to 1 by vth that is tau time is inversely proportional to tau means from this we know that vth is directly proportional to t so instead of vth we write it tau is proportional to 1 by root t electrical conductivity sigma is given by n e square tau by m from which we can say that sigma is proportional to tau and tau is proportional to 1 by root t. So theoretical value sigma theoretically it is showing that it is proportional to 1 by root t. But the prediction of CFET is not in agreement with the experimental values because in the experimental value we get it at sigma experimental is proportional to 1 by t. But here theoretically we are getting sigma theoretical value is proportional to 1 by root t. So, this is not in agreement. So, this could not be explained by CFET. 
now dependence of the third point is dependence of electrical conductivity on electron concentration so according to cfet classical theory electrical conductivity is given by sigma is equal to n e square tau by m from this equation we say that sigma is proportional to n that means more n more sigma this means that divalent and trivalent metals with a larger concentration of electrons should possess much higher electrical conductivity than a monovalent metals with which is a contradiction to the observed fact what is the fact here is experimentally it has been found that conductivity of monovalent metals like copper and silver is greater than the divalent and trivalent metals like zinc and aluminium so what exactly is happening here as per the theory more valency more should be the conductivity but experimentally the copper and silver which are more valency is one we are having greater conductivity than the divalent and trivalent so it has been become a failure so these three points could not be explained by the cfet so cfet failed to explain these three concepts